Hi everyone, the ship here. So we've been getting a lot of uh, player responses to what happened at the WCA. Uh, if you just go to Reddit, you'll find like a thousand different comments about how most people were quite dissatisfied of what happened there. And there's quite a few things. So it's not like it's a one here or maybe two, but th there's a quite a bit of it. And there's also a lot of conspiracy theories out there about everything that happened. And some of it might have a little bit basis, and others, well, you need a tinfoil hat in order to subscribe to this kind of bullshit. So we're going to break this down, and we're going to talk. So it, it basically, when it comes to the conspiracies, there's a few main points. Uh, first one, change in format at, like, the last minute. So you had all these constructed players from like the EU and the NA coming over there and then you changed the format on them at the last minute. This really caused a lot of problems. And then the format that you're getting for the group stage is a blind pick. Now a lot of people can, could not figure out why this was done. Some people postulated that this was done in order to give the Chinese player base a little bit of an advantage or to kind of equalize the odds. This might be true. We don't know. All right. But it is something to say that of the, what was it, 13 Chinese players that went there, six made it to the top 16 and two of them made first and second. So if you just go on a pure stat line, yeah, it looks a little suspicious, but at the same time, that could have happened either way. All right, so the, the format change, as a tournament organizer, I think that was the dumbest thing they could have ever fucking did. Period, point blank. Uh, it's my understanding that the guys for WCA are also the same ones who do WCG, and we know exactly how much of a clusterfuck they are. I'm sorry. I've seen what happens during League of Legends and Dota stuff. You guys have dropped the ball repeatedly. Okay, so we're going to move on to another point of controversy, faulty equipment. So, in the match with Raynad versus who the fuck knows, um, Raynad's mouse literally malfunctioned repeatedly. And at one time that it malfunctioned, he ended up dropping something on something else that changed where the buff was going to be because the mouse re-engaged at the like, wrong possible moment. So... It ended up costing him the game. This led to a very infamous salty response in an interview afterwards, which I kind of agree wholeheartedly in it. Death in a Desert does seem a little bit more of a nicer alternative than having to go through the, what you just went through. But still, in any kind of tournament, you always have rules for if the equipment fails, like the monitor fails, the computer you're running it on fails, keyboard malfunction, mouse malfunction. Every kind of digital tournament has a rule for mechanical failures. So why didn't this one? It seems a little shaky. Uh, I'll grant you that. All right. One of the other major ones that people are complaining about is the group stage placement. Yeah, this one was shady at best. I mean, you had some of the toughest opponents in the same group stage thereby ensuring that only half of them would advance. So why was this done? Again, it's been postulated that this was done as an equalizer to kind of give the Chinese players a chance. I don't know if there's any validity in this, considering Gara wasn't in that uh, thing, and he still made it in to top four. So a little sketchy on that. But it, 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 it's definitely something that I agree is a little fishy. All right. Now, what does all this mean? Well, you could believe that some of these conspiracy theories are true, which I've read quite a few of them, like the Chinese government was funding this event and ordered them to ensure that a Chinese national would actually win it. I would not be surprised some kind of shenanigans like this have happened in real life sports, so it could happen in esports. Sure, maybe, why not? Um, 
other people are trying to cite uh, percentages and this, that, and the other, and oh, these people played horribly. Well, okay, I saw a lot of the Chinese players play, and the ones that I saw, yeah, they kind of played like crap. A couple of them, however, were really good, and they ended up being in the top 16, so I kind of have to say that one's a moot point. But again, if you look at the percentages, it really does kind of make you wonder. All right. Um, there were also a couple other things that happened there. Um, some of the players played badly, plain and simple. Uh, my boy Noxious, yeah, he, he played pretty poorly, and he'll admit it, he did. He's still upset about it. But what ended up happening there was just pure psyching himself out. Before the matches, everybody was told, like, all right, don't just go with that instinctual gut decision that you're going to do. Think out the play. Now, this is generally a smart thing. Unfortunately, if you overthink things, you kind of screw yourself. So, there was that. Um, I know Forsen made a complaint about he was able to hear the Chinese commentators while he was up on stage. Possible shenanigans there. Doubtful, really, because from my understanding from what I read from Monk is it was almost impossible to make out anything because of all the ambient noise that was going on around there. So unless, like, Forsen has, like, some Superman hearing ability, I, I don't think the Chinese would really hear much of anything. Um, so there's that. I'm trying to think, was there anything else that was kind of problematic? Oh, yes, we didn't get to see all the games. So, really, a lot of what everybody is saying is just kind of fanboy rage because their guy did not make it to where they get it. I, I get that. That's fine. Um, I do, however, feel that the people running the Hearthstone event for WCA didn't know what the fuck they were doing. And I'm going to say that period, point blank. They did not know what the fuck you, they were doing. I've run over 100 Hearthstone tournaments. You can verify this. Y'all motherfuckers didn't know what the fuck you were doing. Alright. Um, hopefully, though, from this whole experience, you know, with the, the fan rage, the, the player rage, I mean, there are players who are saying they're boycotting next year. I mean, you really need to start taking a look at your event if you've got players saying, fuck you, we're never coming back. Alright? Hopefully you're going to learn this lesson, and you're going to fix whatever you're doing. Because Hearthstone needs tournaments like yours. It's great for international esports development. It's great for Hearthstone itself. But if this is how you handle them, then I kind of have to side with the player base and say, hell no. All right? Please. WCA people, WCG, whoever the hell you are. Um, dude, consult. Go talk with the people at ESL. Hell, you know what? Contact me. I'll tell you how you, to run this shit. Okay, you could have done that whole tournament a hell of a lot simpler and a hell of a lot easier, and the fans would have loved you for it. All right? But contact somebody because you need help. You drop the ball, and that's the God's honest truth. Any other conspiracy kind of thing, that's complete bullshit. All right? But in terms of how you handled it, you fucked up. So... Anywho, this is Shiv saying thank you very much. Uh... Be pleased to tune in for Deck Talks and all the other things that I'm putting out there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.